Okay, <clears throat> welcome back to our second part of our lesson. Um, through the first uh, lesson today, we've we were focusing on the um, on our basis for our healing and deliverance. We briefly looked at what we did the last week on our healing and deliverance. The basis of our healing and deliverance is provided for us on the cross. Uh, another aspect or another basis, another tenet of these of this is how we are new creation when we are when we become believers. Uh, today we looked at the first the point number three, which we spoke of the authority that we have as believers to expel demons, to bring about healing. And we started off on the point of the anointing of the Holy Spirit, the anointing. And um, at the end of last class, we just uh, quickly were trying to review what we mean by anointing. And uh, we see how Paul refers to the anointing of the Holy Spirit, that the anointing of the Spirit uh, of the Spirit for the believer is is there. So those who believe in Jesus Christ are those who receive the anointing. Um, we saw some references where we see Jesus Himself being anointed by the Holy Spirit, and how He uh, proclaimed that, um, where He uh, He said that he was anointed by the Lord to do the work of the ministry. So the scripture speaks of believers in Christ as being anointed with the Holy Spirit. Um, we, we find that, um, you know, so, so maybe several things are, are just clear about the anointing of the Holy Spirit. First, that it indicates that all believers have been anointed by the Spirit and there are no exceptions to this. All those who believe have the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Second is that we do not anoint ourselves. God is the one who anoints us. Thus the anointing of the Holy Spirit is completely the work of God that is on our behalf. Um, and also we see that this anointing never leaves us and it remains with us forever. It says in John um, 14, 6, if I'm right, I'm just going to quickly look that up so I do not made a mistake. John 14, uh, sorry, John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Um, it says that I am the counselor and I will never leave you, right? I will never leave you nor forsake you. So that's that's in John 14. I'm sorry, I can't pick up the verse. Um, uh, so, so that it, it brings, the, brings that additional understanding that the anointing does not leave us. So we find that the anointing ministry of the Holy Spirit can also be for the purpose of teaching and imparting uh, power to believers like we see in Jesus' ministry. It is also that uh, work of the Holy Spirit that teaches us the truth of God and we understand who he is and what he wants from us. Um, uh, and as, as we mentioned, it is there we receive that anointing. Um, I think there's also something, maybe one more thing to consider is that while each believer has received the anointing of the Holy Spirit, it is possible, I think, like what Beth said, that God will anoint and equip believers for a special ministry to follow. So we can say that a person has been anointed with the Spirit to fulfill a certain task. Again, we see that it is God who anoints a believer with the Spirit, spirit um, and believers do not anoint themselves. So the anointing can refer to the uh, reception of the Holy Spirit or a special ministry. Uh, whatever the case may be, we believe that uh, that we are anointed by the Holy Spirit. So being anointed by the Holy Spirit shows that there is the power and the work of the Holy Spirit is what brings healing even to the soul or even to the inner person. 
Um, I'd like to make a reference of this verse in Isaiah 10, 27, and this is given in your notes. So could I request somebody to read it? Isaiah 10, verse 27. Isaiah 10, 27. Mom, can I read? Please go ahead, Elisha. Okay, Isaiah chapter 10, verse 27. I am reading from the ESV. And in that day, his burden will depart from your shoulder, and his yoke from your neck, and the neck and your yoke will be broken because of the fats. Thank you. So we see that the anointing is that which breaks the yokes. Yokes meaning burdens. And moves these burdens also meaning different oppressions of all kinds from us. So it is the anointing that breaks the yoke. The presence, the power of the Holy Spirit that breaks bondages and that breaks the yoke and that removes these oppression of all kinds, as we see in that, in that scripture. So the anointing of God is what brings healing to our souls. It removes um, the spirit of heaviness. That's what brings comfort. That's what brings uh, peace and joy where there can be mourning. That's what brings healing and brings about freedom that that we see and that's beautifully written in isaiah 61 verses 1 to 7 and this is what you know we read earlier that he quoted this part of the verse isaiah 61 1 to um uh, 1 to 3 uh, as he began his ministry you know making this very relevant to the uh, the anointed ministry, the New Testament, uh, a spirit anointed ministry. Okay, so I, I'll just read those verses out, and uh, we can we we we'll just uh, uh, you know we we can just pick up some things that that's there. So it says Isaiah sixty one verses one to seven. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to teach. Uh, to preach good tidings to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to those who are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God. Uh, the next few you would see that it it's directed to the issues of the soul, to comfort all who mourn, to console those who mourn in Zion, to give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they may be called the trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. Okay, And, and it goes on of whatever... Uh, the spirit of the Lord anoints someone, somebody to do. So we see that the, uh, that big, that is the anointing of the Holy Spirit is something that's within us, and we know that all who believe has the presence of the Holy Spirit, and we work by the power of the Holy Spirit. It it doesn't happen on our own, on our own doing, on our own abilities, on our own ways. It comes because of the power of the Holy Spirit. So that's the fourth foundational truth where we're looking at what is the basis of healing and deliverance. And as you're seeing all of this, you know, it begins to um, it begins to help you understand that uh, there is there is a lot of freedom uh, that you have. I mean, especially for those who may be in ministry to think that you've got to do something. You've got to ensure that there's healing and deliverance. It doesn't come by your own power, by your own works, by your own standing, by anything that you can call yourself. If it doesn't have the bases, these bases, we, we are rendered powerless. There's nothing that we have. So, uh, you know, to understand that it all comes from the Lord. And the more that we seek, we stand in relationship with him, 
continue to keep our minds tuned with him the presence the power of god the the very foundational truths that we believe in operates and and the healing and deliverance comes because of what god does in us so he's the one who does it all we are just the mouthpieces or the instruments that are used in order to help people receive the healing and deliverance that that's come by so we've got to exercise uh, that authority exercise you know just going forward knowing that we are being sent by the power of the holy spirit so the fourth one as we looked in is the anointing of the holy spirit okay uh, i'm just going to stop here for a quick uh, uh, short time to just answer any questions hear any observations and uh, we can go on to the last point for today anybody has any questions or reflections any thoughts any testimonies ma'am i have a question yeah go ahead okay my question is uh, jesus being uh, as a human he was perfectly sinless and he walked in the anointing of god and he did mighty works to such an extent where john says that if everything was recorded the books wouldn't have contained in the world and then jesus goes on to bless his disciples and he says you will do greater works than these so i'm just wondering like jesus he was perfect in holiness perfect in obedience and submission to god and he did everything beyond one's comprehension he performed uh, miracles signs wonders and so when he says uh, as my disciples you will do greater works than what i did i just want to understand ma'am uh, we 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 are uh, sin, sinful people like and anointing uh, is uh, it depends on our consecration and our uh, walk with the lord so uh, what what did jesus mean when he said greater works so what uh, how do we understand the greater works that jesus mentioned for his disciples that they would be able to do hmm. and how how it, is it possible like probably thank you ma'am okay okay so um i think avni is making a reference to the verse i'm just going to pull the verse out uh the reference to the verse is john 14 12 to 14 so i'll i'll just read that out okay uh john 14 12 to 14 it says most assuredly i say to you he who believes in me the works that i do he will do also and greater works than these he will do because i go to my father okay so um uh, something that uh, and, and if you look at the the passage uh, on this he's talking jesus is revealing to his disciples about the spirit of truth and he's saying that there will be the the spirit and, and it it follows that as well where he promises the holy spirit and we see that the holy spirit is called as the comforter the counselor the uh, the uh, the advocate right and so he's making his um um uh, like like he's he's introducing the power of the holy spirit and he he says those who believe in him the works that i do he will also and greater works because i go to the father so what what is he meaning to say is when i go to the father even though i am not with you here in person i am going to give you the authority to uh, function to operate in my name then there's whatever you ask in my name i will do it and later verses 15 downwards he talks about the promise of the holy spirit he says i will give you another helper uh, and and all that you do he will be with you he dwells with you and he will be with you and he will and jesus is not leaving us as orphans so even as whatever jesus has done in all his perfection and all his uh um all his sinlessness if that's even a word um you know he he's showing us or he's promising us that with the power of the holy spirit there are going to be greater things that he's going to have us do which 
indicates to us that he is endowing us or he is giving us the power of the Holy Spirit to function greater things or greater works than what has been that that he has done okay so he's vesting in us the power and the authority to do much more than what he would he has done or every situation that we may come across that the holy spirit will be there as the guide the presence to um, to do much more than he has done so it, it it's not about that the scripture doesn't say that it you know, that Jesus has limited himself in doing what he has. I don't think that's what it means. It means that whatever you are going to be facing, you're not alone and you're not the one who's going to be doing it because the world cannot receive the spirit of truth. I think that verse is John 14, 17 says, the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him. And because you know the spirit of truth and he dwells in you, you will do much more than what um, the works that I have done. So he is endowing us with the presence of the Holy Spirit that is the spirit of himself with us and saying through you, I will do greater things. And that's what he's indicating to say. I hope that makes it clear of me. Okay, all right, okay. Yes, uh, Christopher, I think you have a question. Uh, yes, my question is, uh, does the baptism of the Holy Spirit uh, provide anointing? Uh, and if a person has not yet received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, is that person still anointed or less, less anointed? So the presence of the Holy Spirit, there is an anointing. Um, when a person becomes a believer, there is the anointing that is there. But, you know, the baptism of the Holy Spirit is the expressions of the, that anointing where either you speak in tongues, you you know, those the, the gifts that is that is spoken about. So the anointing is there, but to be able to exercise the anointing, you have to be a willing instrument to to being uh, to 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 express or to manifest the different gifts of the spirit. So the anointing is there, but you've got to walk in that anointing. You have to you have to use that anointing it's it's like a, a tag or it's something that you have like you know we were talking about authority you have the authority but you need to walk in it so to be when you when you're being baptized by the holy spirit it's manifesting the spirits of the the gifts of the spirit are being manifested in you and you walk in that anointing the anointing is there but you walk in the anointing when you receive the baptism of the holy spirit all right i I think I answered that. Yeah, OK. All right, so um, yeah, I suppose there isn't another question. So let's move on to the last part, last uh, point of the basis of healing and deliverance. And uh, um, the, the, the last one is the power of God's word. Um, uh, so the, when, when we're looking at uh, healing, receiving healing of the soul, you know, we've been talking about how we need to understand uh, how we, we've looked at understanding the soul and why it needs to be healed or restored uh, or renewed once we become born again. So we, we remember we saw the word um, uh, to soul, which means suke. And this, this word uh, the Bible writers use when talking about the things of, of man, and that's when they called it the soul. So, so in, in the soul of man, you know, we saw that there is the mind, the will, and the emotions, and our emotional patterns, whatever the patterns of how we emote, tends to formulate the way that we are or our personalities. Like, for example, you know, when we become angry um, or we, become, we are unforgiving, we are bitter or we are fearful, we feel rejected, we, we are offended. What do we do is we are yielding to the flesh. So the soul is formed through the reactions to the information that the mind takes. So whatever the mind is got, the soul responds with the, uh, with the information it takes in. So the way each person chooses to react to the things he either hears or the things um, that happen to him or the things he chooses to receive as truth is what causes the soul 
um, to become broken okay and and when they when especially when they take those things as truth it causes the soul to become broken so when a person is born again like we said he becomes a new creation and it's also the soul that must be renewed okay or the person that is struggling um, uh, uh, often may may try to communicate with and and live in the world through an old nature soul. So if if it is not renewed, you're you're still going back to that old personality. And we we have learned that we need to resist these things of the flesh, um, you know, by the power of the Holy Spirit to help us walk in that forgiveness. So as we've seen that, you know, that's the kind of basis we've built, and we, we know that we believe that God is able to heal us. But sometimes we aren't sure that he will. And, uh, you know, we need to encourage ourselves to know that how much God wants to heal our souls. And uh, it, like we, we keep saying, it's, we, we cannot earn the love of God or his healing, uh, healing touch, but to believe what he says and do what he asks us to do. And where do we get that? We get that through the word of God. So looking at some scriptures, I know we've read some of the scriptures over and over again, but um, I know to just focus on this, you know, the very one of the very first scriptures we spoke about was 3 John 1, 2. It says, in every way you may succeed and prosper and be in good health, just as your soul prospers. So it is, like, like we said, it is the desire of God for our souls to prosper. So what do we do? Proverbs 4, 20, 22 says, you know, attend to my words to the word of God, keep them at the center of your heart, for they are life to those who find them, healing and health to all their flesh. So what we read here is that the word of God becomes like medicine or is healing power for us, healing power um, for our souls. Uh, you know, Jeremiah brings that out and says, heal me, Lord, and I shall be healed. Save me and I shall be saved for you are my praise. So uh, to to bring about the word of God into, into our lives, because that's what creates and that's what brings about that healing, another basis for our healing and deliverance. So the, um, the word of God has the power to save our souls. And um, uh, quickly taking up a verse that's there, it's in James chapter 1, verse 21. It says, Therefore, lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save your souls. So the word, um, the word of God is that which is able to save your souls. So the word here, save, comes from the Greek word sozo, which I'm sure many of you are familiar with, which means to keep well, which means to save, which means to protect, which means to make better off, to make whole, to make complete. And that this in itself, the verse in itself shows you it's the word of God that is implanted in you that saves your souls and i think that's that word is important the word implanted is to put in to sow in to graft in and when you receive this grafted in word it becomes a part of you and you're made whole and you know those of you who may may be familiar with gardening where you graft a branch to another and it becomes as one okay so that's what it talks if you of engrafting the word of god that brings about healing so we what, what you know to to understand that we learn uh, to receive this healing the more that we get to know god and by speaking what he said over our lives or what he has said in scripture, learning to speak this truth into our spirits. So we, um, so something that Jesus said, you know, and I, and, uh, I just want to bring about two things that Jesus spoke about his, his word. He says in Matthew chapter four, verse four, it says, 
man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that comes forth from my mouth from his from his mouth so our true life our complete life comes from every word that comes from god okay and it is just not it just says, does not live by bread alone it's not bread that can satisfy alone not other things that can satisfy alone but by that, by every word that is found in his word okay uh, jesus also talks about in john 6 6 to 3 he says my words are spirit and they are life so when we feed our souls from the richness of God's word, there are many things that we experience. And it's and some of the things that we experience is one is that inner healing, that inner brokenness, um, uh, the the pain or the hurt that that situations or people have caused us. You receive from the richness of God's word, we experience that healing. We also experience an expectation, a hopeful expectation of what God wants us, wants to take us into, what God wants to move us into. You know, so there is that that place of expectation that we have as we uh, learn and, and keep feeding into God's word. There is strength and confidence that we have. Uh, may, even to go on with life situations that could be painful, that uh, that where we are able to walk in the peace and in the strength of God, even though there may be situations that may not be very different at that point of time. But as we feed our souls with his word, we see a definite strength and confidence. We also see that our desires become shaped by God, become reshaped by God. Like I think I'll, uh, maybe as an example is maybe you have a very difficult boss that you are working with or a, you know, a colleague that you're working with and you're, you're praying and or you know, you've been significantly hurt by the person or the way that they deal with you, the way that they um, beat you down. And the prayer could be to teach him a lesson or, you know, send him out of work or uh, give him a demotion or send him out of the team. But as we feed into God's word, our desires become shaped by God. So more than the person changing, it is the way God works in your heart to develop a spirit of forgiveness, a spirit of love, a spirit of peace, a spirit of endurance, a spirit of patience, long suffering. So your desires also get shaped by God, right? And that happens only when we are continuously working and and reading god's word uh, another part another thing that that happens when we feed our souls with god's word is it aligns us to god's will and whatever he wants to bless us with even with a point of emotional hardships and i think uh, you know a lot of us can <clears throat> can stand testament to this that something an emotional a concern or an issue or a difficulty you've had in the past at the time that you were going through that you didn't see what purpose it would have had but much later in time you know that God has fulfilled his purposes through you because of that very one specific uh, you know either that incident or that event or that life circumstance, or even the the very um, fact that there was deep emotional trauma that went through. Uh, I've heard examples of people who've been through mental health issues, 
you know, those who've gone through severe depression, severe anxiety, and at the phase that they were going through, there's been there's been a lot of brokenness and pain and hurt, but just standing with God in His Word, declaring healing over themselves, speaking for a restoration, has brought them to a place of being able to engage with those who've had similar conditions, those who've had difficulties. There are countless stories of those who've been abused as um, children, as young people, uh, have gone through significant life trauma as a result of the abuse, maybe in their early adulthood. Um, but how God uses those very experiences, that very process of change into working with those who, who may be abused also, right? So we, we find that uh, it aligns, God's word just brings you to a place of, um, of restoration where, where he can use whatever has been for your bad, for the good of his kingdom, for his glory, for his purposes. Okay, So feeding on God's word into the richness of his word, you experience inner healing, you experience expectation, there's a greater sense of strength and confidence, and there are whatever those desires may be are changed by God, to do his will and there is a reshaping and realignment to his to his will and to his blessings so if you if you when when one makes scripture part of their daily life you experience the healing and the working of god's power because you know again a very familiar verse that we keep reading is hebrews chapter 4 verse 12 it says the word of god is living and powerful, and it is sharper than any two-edged sword that pierces even the division of soul and spirit and joints and marrow and is a discerner of thoughts and intents of the heart. So the more that we allow ourselves to marinate ourselves in the word of God, it becomes medicinal in its effect. It takes on God's word, becomes medicine for our souls. And we see that healing comes because he's promised that his word is life and truth, living and powerful, and that we live by his word. So uh, even as Jesus talks about this, you know, when he talks to his disciples, he says, John 15, 7, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. So the, the, the core of, of our healing and deliverance comes from us um, being richly equipped with God's word. The more that we are in God's word, the more we will see that it happens and it's a sim and it's as simple as a practice or a discipline to continue to stand in God's word when you are specifically looking for healing for the issues of your soul. Okay, so uh, the engrafted or the powerful word of God that brings about this healing and deliverance. Okay, so we spoke about these five points. The first one we said was the provision that God's made on the cross, the new creation that we have been made. Third is the authority that he's given us to uh, expel demons and to bring about healing. Fourth is um, the anointing of the Holy Spirit. And fifth is uh, the word of God, of how we learn, renew, our minds and our souls at the Word of God. Okay, um, I, I just want to spend a few minutes before I have one more portion to complete, but I think I can take around five, 10 minutes um, to anyone would like to bring about a, 
a testimony about how the word of God completely changed, healed, transformed you in any way. Um, I have a huge number of examples, but I think I, I'd like y'all, maybe somebody to, to speak and uh, just testify about what God's word, what kind of power God's word has made in your life, either through a healing or a deliverance or uh, anything, any kind of a provision. So just opening it up for maybe five minutes. This is your chance to testify. Um, Pastor, can I say something? Yes, Shay, please go ahead. Um, this is actually God's provision for my life um, to testify about. Um, so um, this was uh, some, uh, some years ago. Um, I was kind of out of work and um, I, was, uh, I, was, I was due for my citizenship. And um, I had a friend who invited me for a function, which I attended. In the course of our discussion, he discovered that I was due for citizenship, but I never said anything about um, the payment for the application. Um, he just disused that I couldn't afford it at that moment. And so he surprises me by just giving me the amount to go for the citizenship ceremony, to apply for my citizenship here in Canada. And I was, wow, I, I was really amazed. I, and I knew, truly speaking, it had to just be God because it wasn't something I was planning to tell him. I was just going to stand in faith um, to believe God for the provision and when it will happen. But everything just happened. The reason why it was so significant was because um, it was just before COVID hit, we were the last set of people to do um, the ceremony in person. That was in 2020, before COVID hit and everyone, you know, everyone was told to walk from home. Everything was done remotely. But just looking at that happen, you know, where I didn't have any, any uh, I was still believing God for it, but I didn't know it was going to happen in just a short time. God just made it possible and everything just worked out well. So yeah, that was just God's supernatural way of providing uh, what was on my heart and what I was standing to believe for him through somebody. Yeah, amen. Thank you, Shay. Amen. Thank you. Ma'am, can I share? Yes. Go ahead, Rupa. Yes. This is a verse from uh, 2 Corinthians Rupa, you're on mute. Sorry, ma'am. This is uh, 2 Corinthians 12, chapter 9th verse. What God has promised Paul, my grace is sufficient for you and my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I'll boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses so that the power of Christ may rest upon me. This uh, verse has become a reality in my life because I am very uh, tormented with severe pains in my body and was going through tough times in those days. And all, I was always feeling low and dejected. That time this word has really nurtured me, talk, uh, spoke to, spoken to me. And I started uh, depending on God's strength and His grace each moment of my life and that has really transformed my thinking and the way I react to pain. I started taking my pain as a gift from God and also experience his power each moment of my while I going while going through that pain each day is a uh, is grace. I experience his grace and power in my body because in my strength I cannot walk few steps or in that time, during that time, even the breath, I could not breathe because of that time also. I banged on this verse saying, Lord, you said your grace is sufficient to me. 
so to take this breath i am depending on your strength so this way i thank god for uh, allowing that pain in my life that i could experience god's power and presence in a greater measure and i thank god for it i always thought how can people rejoice in their pain how can people rejoice in their weaknesses this is something which i could not understand before i went through that pain but now i know how how we can experience god intimately in our pain in our uh, whatever we go through in our weaknesses when we don't have strength to even to take a step how god is faithful and his power rests upon us as thank you ma'am thank you rupa thank you for sharing that thank you uh somebody else has also shared i'm not just taking, I'm not taking the name um in my marriage i saw god's work manifesting for 10 years uh i could not have harmony in my marriage but um but i kept speaking god's word his love for the church is the same way my husband loves me uh and uh so god gave my god manifested my plea through dream to my sister and then on i could see the immense transformation in our relationship i can't express my joy of what god has done in my life alongside my daughter um was suffering with wheezing everything god aligned and have peace and harmony in my family thank you thank you for sharing that yeah i think i I have a testimony of something that I had uh, you know spoken God's word on behalf of a family member um so when when I uh when my son was young he was around 4 years and was got into a school there was a lot of he just feared school he just feared anything outside of the home was a very shy child wouldn't communicate or talk to anybody yeah. outside and um so what i do is when i every morning when i used to take him to school uh when i just dropped him i would say i would take his name and said god has not given you a spirit of fear or timidity but he's given you a spirit of power love and a sound mind and i'd say this for 3 years he went to school to that specific school 3 years right from the time when he was 3 and a half to 6 and a half i would just say this verse to him and now he's 16 and i can't imagine the way god has transformed him and made him a child who loves people he cannot sit by himself he needs people he needs to talk to people and way back then 10 years back 10 13 years back it was he wouldn't want to meet with people he just want to stay at home because he feared how to speak to people and just with the word of god i saw the healing that happened in his soul so that's what uh, you know i can testify to many other things but this is on behalf so even when you're speaking on behalf as a as a mother i took on the authority god had given me and spoke it over my son and we see uh, you know that that change that's happened yes uh, shri kumar i think you have something to share yes pastor thank you uh i have so many testimonies one testimony i will share with you um um it happened um um three years back uh, when god has brought me out uh, from a dangerous situation um i was not knowing the power of the word of god and i was not knowing the power of confession but as i was hearing pastor chris uh, oyakhlam's message and he used to always uh, stress about the confession of the word so i learned it from him and uh, i started confessing uh, certain things and in one thing i always say that a sickness cannot prevail over my body and sickness has no power because christ has already paid the price that was every day i used to confess and uh, and that was uh, every morning that was my routine and one day what happened that um, i sh- i was preparing for my brother's marriage and uh, we were um, um, we were in a different uh, city and uh, i was with my brother and uh, uh, we went to pick the card and suddenly um after that uh, we were on the way to um to print the, to give it to the printer 
and while i was um, dictating and um, telling the uh, person how to uh, how to print this card suddenly something happened to me in such a way that i heard a voice that uh, whatever is now going to happen it will you will not able to overcome it and suddenly i don't know what happened that i was on the floor that i know after half an hour and um, i was hospitalized and when i was hospitalized the doctor said you had um, a sudden uh, lee you had a brain stroke and uh, you could add um, you know it could add um, um, you could add died actually so but uh, we don't know that how you overcame it uh, either you could add um, paralyzed or um, or you, <laughs> you so you might had that but uh, i know the power of the confession saved me and uh, and is still keeping me healthy and uh, uh, the power of the death couldn't able to prevail over me the power of the satan couldn't able to prevail over me um, that is one testimony i want to share the power, how the power of the god word of god works thank you pastor thank you thank you thank you shrikumar yes so i'm sure each of us have a testimony like this and that really encourages us to keep at the word of god okay that's that's wonderful thank you all for sharing i just uh, so just before we close um uh, you know even as we have spoken about the basis of of our healing and deliverance um even though god's made he's we understand that these provisions have been made we must ensure that we make the choice um to not uh, to cut off any kind of entry points or any kind of doors and leave it opened for the work of the enemy or the work of darkness okay uh, ephesians 4 21 27 says don't give any place don't give a foothold to the devil and god so god's done everything that we needed he's for our wholeness but we need to ensure that we keep ourselves in the place of care where we don't allow um, uh, those doors to be opened, and we spoke of some of this. Uh, you know, how are these? How do we? How do these entry points are, are they open? We we spoke about that. You know, when sin is there, when in our places, in our times of weakness, we spoke about that as to how we've got to be careful not to keep these points open. Uh, it's it's just like the example that's given here is you know when 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 you have a home, and uh, you're giving your home. To someone on rent, um, you know, God, uh, your your landlord has given you the permission to take care of that place. So if you mess that place up, it's not you know the landlord is not the one uh, who's at fault. It's you who are are going to determine or going to take care what you allow inside or what kind of influence comes inside. Okay, because the the stewardship is given to you as a as a tenant, you have the authority there in the name of the landlord so similarly we understand that god this is the temple of god this is what god's given to us and he gives us that permission and that determination to understand what is it that we open ourselves to so keeping ourselves in the word of god in the presence of the holy spirit recognizing have discern discernment for what we should allow in and what we shouldn't okay so we come to the end of this uh, this lesson next week we will start in looking at how we can receive our healing and deliverance so so this chapter this this chapter that we finished yesterday last week and this week really helps us you know it's the foundation now we're going to be building on it we're going to be building the building and uh, and to, to ensure that we have those foundations in place as we as we go ahead we have to work in confidence knowing that our foundations of truth are in place right yeah so thank you all for sharing thank you for your testimonies uh, may i request uh, somebody to close in prayer and uh, maybe i will ask ask somebody to close in prayer um salome if you're there would you like to please close in a word of prayer salome or felix felix if you're there could you would you kindly close in a word of prayer? Okay, Abhishek. I'll be calling out the whole list. Abhishek? 
Yes, ma'am. Yes, can you close with the water? Okay. Okay, sure. Holy Father, we come before your holy presence once again, Lord. Thank you for uh, this teaching, Lord, for inner healing, Lord. Uh, thank you for the word of God we learned today, Lord, that may sink into our heart, that we may apply into our life, Lord. So I pray that bless all the students, each one of us, that we may experience the healing in our soul, Lord. And bless our teacher, Lord. Anoint her, Lord. Use her mightily in your kingdom, Lord, for your purpose, for your glory. In thank you for this class, Lord. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, everybody, for coming. God bless you. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. Bye bye.